Open. Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica on our continuing series on the Apple Bandai Pippin. Today we're taking a look at Marathon 2, more specifically Super Marathon, because the disc has both the original game as well as the sequel Marathon 2 pressed on it. It's definitely the best game for the Pippin, and it's also the rarest. If you're even able to find a copy to buy, and that is going to be a very rare instance, you're going to pay quite dearly for the right to own it. I am playing this on a CDR. I have no interest in buying it because the game is available on original Macintosh computers, Windows computers, and Xbox Live Arcade, and you can have them for like $50 to $60 as a physical copy or like $5 to download. This, if you find it to buy, is definitely going to be over $1,000, so I don't recommend you do that. But as far as the game is concerned, it is a continuation of Marathon, and while it is a first-person shooter, it's unlike Doom or Wolfenstein 3D, anything like that, because you get a lot of different backstory. And this was made by Bungie, a company that's more famously known for creating a little character called Master Chief and the series Halo, but this is kind of where they got their start. They were Macintosh developers, and the original Halo was supposed to be a Mac-exclusive game before it transitioned over to Xbox and Microsoft, but this is kind of where Halo gets its start. I mean, granted, there's nothing to do with Halo in this game, but it is a first-person shooter set in a sci-fi space-like environment, so you can definitely see that Bungie had a lot of that impulse already well before they got to the Halo franchise. Now, as far as the game's concerned, it is extremely good. There are a lot of awesome level layout designs. The weapons are great. All the controls for the Pippin are pretty good. It's not as good as using a mouse and a keyboard, but it definitely works with that Applejack controller. So the game is awesome, and I can't recommend you play it enough. If you have a Pippin, definitely burn it and play it on it because that's a rare instance, and you should definitely try it. But don't buy a Pippin for this game because there's so many other ways to play it. And that's basically the reality of the entire Apple Bandai Pippin is that most of the games either play on computers or you can buy them for, you know, classic Mac or on Steam or download them as abandonware. So actually advocating anybody go out and purchase these games to play them on a Pippin, I would highly recommend against that. But it's your money, your collector. Totally, if you want to start up a Pippin collection, by all means, I bought the console and I'm just burning discs. But it is an awesome game. I really enjoy it. I did play this on Macintosh back in the mid-90s. It came out in 95 because up until about like 2015, I never really used Windows PCs. So I have that experience with Macintosh and playing games on their hardware. I finally just gave up with the Apple ecosystem and having to pay the Apple tax, so I switched to Windows. But the gameplay, again, it's a super competent first-person shooter. You'll see on the bottom of the screen there, you have that radar, that heads-up display, so you know where all those enemies are coming from. And then you have the data for your different weapons, the ammunition, your health, things like that. Now, the game can struggle to run on Pippin. At the default memory configuration without a RAM expansion pack, some music and some sounds from the game aren't available compared to their PC counterparts. Now, I have more sound effects because my prototype Pippin came with a prototype 4 megabyte expansion RAM pack, but you are going to have some slight sound limitations on the game if you're playing this on a stock Pippin. It really doesn't affect much. It's just a few sound effects. It runs at the same speed, but it's definitely something that's going to be lesser of an experience than playing on a classic Macintosh or Xbox Live Arcade or even the Windows 95 version. And you will see here that we got this little machine chain gun, and it definitely mows those enemies down. And I will say that all the sound effects in the game, all the graphics for 95, this looks really great. Had this come out on PlayStation or on Sega Saturn, you would definitely be buying this game and playing it. Because for its time and place, it is a great first-person shooter. And... For a console game around that time, it holds up really well. I mean, you had Doom, you had Wolfenstein 3D coming home. On the Saturn, you had things like Power Slave and Quake, which were really showing you know, how far that system could be pushed. But as far as what the Pippin is capable of, it really is just a Macintosh 6200 in its own custom box with some slight hardware changes. So whatever you're able to play on a computer like that, generally it's going to work on a Pippin as well, and it's going to be really nice. And you can put this disc into a classic Macintosh, I showed it in the intro, and you can boot up the executable. So you don't even need a Pippin to be able to play Super Marathon. You just need a PowerPC-based Mac running OS 7.5.2 all the way to 9.2, which is what I tested it on. But you'll see here, now that we've 
we've kind of accomplished all the different goals from that level, we're going to get a little bit more story information. It's going to drive that plot forward because like I said, it is a continuation of the story from the original marathon. And then once you've read that, you're going to transition to the next level. And the game has plenty of things to do, and it does give you a save feature, which I really appreciate. The NVRAM in the Pippin still works perfectly fine, especially with a new battery. But weirdly, for the second level here, it dumps you right in front of an enemy, and you instantaneously start taking damage. It's a weird design decision, but I can kind of forgive it. I mean, it was the mid-90s, and what are you really going to do about something like that? But it's definitely a fun game, and it has kind of an RPG style element to it, just as far as how you, you know, pick up your power-ups, how the story drives itself forward. It's a light RPG. You're not really going to get experience points, but it feels more dynamic than, you know, something like Doom, even though I might actually prefer that style of first-person shooter over something like Marathon. And you'll see there I was able to switch weapons. You have a pistol, you have your fists, and we're seeing a little bit more enemies now. And all the sprite work on them is really good. They're really well animated, all the gore effects, you know, seeing that rib cage come out. They've done a really good job giving you those sort of details that you're looking for in a game like this. Now that we're underwater, you know, you can't just run up onto those shelves there. You have to be able to kind of navigate your way through. So the level layouts they can be a little bit maze-like and confusing, but in the 90s, that was just kind of the norm as far as how first-person shooters went. And I would say that Marathon 2 is definitely better than most as far as how the level structure works. And as you play the game more, you're going to get more used to what the levels are like, and you're going to start kind of realizing what direction you should be heading just based on kind of the architecture and design of that level. Now, I will say it's a little hard to control on the Applejack controller. I mentioned that briefly earlier, but for some reason, they have a D-pad where sometimes forward ends up making you go right. It's just very sensitive, but you do have strafe on the left and right mouse click, which is behind the Applejack controller. So it's not terrible. As far as first-person shooters in the 90s on consoles go, it's definitely one of the better ones I've seen. But I would just love to put a mouse and keyboard into the Pippin and play in that same vein. What I'll let you do right now is I'm just going to let you listen to a little bit of the gameplay and some of the sound effects. It's quite interesting to see and hear. And I'll come back in just about a minute or so and we'll wrap up Marathon 2 and talk a little bit more about what's coming next on the Pippin Playlist series. All right, now that we're done with level two, we're right on to level three, and we hope you enjoyed that little bit of just being able to hear the sound effects, because they are quite good. Now, I definitely think you should play this game, especially if you've never played it before, because while it does have, you know, that age to it being a mid-90s game, it is still really intriguing, the storyline's still really good, and the gameplay's there. So from a retro gaming perspective, this has aged relatively well, but then again, so have things like Doom, because they weren't trying too much. The shooting mechanics are solid, the graphics are solid for what they are, and the game is really fun. So I definitely recommend that if you've never played Marathon 2, play it, even if it looks old, and even if it feels a little bit old, it's still 100% worth your time checking out, and that's kind of my statement for Marathon and Marathon 2. The first game is definitely a little more aging at this point in time, and that's why I decided to show Marathon 2. But if you have a Pippin and you burn the disc, you're able to play both. And then you get weird things like this where those enemies are just standing there and don't activate until you actually shoot them. So it's definitely a game of its time and place, but it still holds up well enough that it's worth checking out. Not only from a lineage standpoint of seeing where Bungie and Halo came from, but also just because it's still a really good game that is 100% worth your time to play and check out. So in that instance, I definitely don't recommend you buy a Pippin to play it. I don't recommend you buy a Pippin really at all unless you're collecting pretty much every console that ever came out. But if you have a Pippin or if you want to play the game, definitely do so. 
Short of that, thanks so much for watching. It's been a lot of fun talking about this game. It takes us a lot of time to make each one of these, so if you could do us a huge favor, go down below and hit like and subscribe. Short of that, we'll be back on Tuesday and Sunday with more episodes, and we'll be back on Friday with more Pippin stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, Alien. Bye-bye.